it's time to start. Yeah, we are 39. Yeah, it should be more or less now. <coughs> so, yes, welcome everybody. My name is Tommy Angback. I'm from the company Alpha Laval. Uh, here I'm going to talk, uh, showcase some uh, in running installations of uh, large heat pumps uh, with natural refrigerants. And this presentation is done on a bookings that was uh, made by Euramon, which is an uh, industry association in Europe and, uh, out and, and more, uh, promoting the use of natural refrigerants. So, yes, um, I just shortly, Alpha Laval Group is a company, a worldwide company, about 20,000 people. Uh, we are active in in, in heat transfer, separation, and fluid handling activities. Of course, when it comes to refrigeration, it's mainly the heat transfer area. So that is 40% of, of this bunch of activity that we are doing. And uh, we have a division that we call the energy division, really focusing the areas of uh, energy efficiency and how we can improve the utilization of our energy. And HVAC and R is in that division. Sustainability for us is, is very important. Uh, Alpha Laval itself, in our operations, we are focusing to be net zero by 2030. But more important is that we are working also with, with our partner, suppliers, customers to obtain energy efficiency and uh, uh, using the best of clean energy uh, and, and, and have circularity of our products in the end. So heat pumps are key to uh, sustainable society and uh, to reduce CO2 emissions that we know. It is, is well um, used in residential uh, applications, um, but there is a growing use in the latest, in last years, 10 years also in industrial applications. And uh, uh, efficiency is very important. I mean, we don't want to... to um, use too much of that nice either fossil free or 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 dirty and electricity produced so a good cop is important and the heat exchanger is part of making the whole system uh, efficient there are many opportunities for large heat pumps in the society it can be uh, as in industry to recover to recover heat in the industry uh, waste heat somewhere and uh, produce hot hot uh, water or uh, heating in other places of the industry. It can also be to use river water, sea water, lake water uh, to uh, produce to, to supply heating to district heating networks or 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 to your factory, etc. Data center is another uh, source of heat uh, to to uh, where you can generate heating for your city, district heating networks, for example. Or it, it can be elsewhere also in the city where you find waste heat or return heat that you could regenerate and produce more heat. We are involved in all of these type of applications and uh, um, designing to um, increase the efficiency of the system. Uh, we have, um, for example, one of the most important areas for us is to to be sure that we can deliver a close approach uh, because we know that if you can increase your evaporation temperature uh, one degree you can save three to six percent of, of efficiency and if you can reduce your condensing temperature by one degree you can also uh, increase the, uh, the efficiency by maybe up to three percent so this is and and this plate heat exchanger that we are supplying are one of the tools to reach to the most uh, out of efficiency. Then we are designing for safe use with natural refrigerants. So uh, low charge is a key. We try to, in all ways, work with uh, the suppliers of system to re reduce the charge. And uh, um, the plate exchanger is a tool to obtain a very small charge. Compactness as well. Uh, to re reduce the space, building construction, power plants, you want to, to utilize your space uh, as efficient as possible. And the plated essential is a tool to ar arrive to that point. 
over time, uh, depending on the installation, um, you need to have a good operation. Uh, if it is seawater, for example, it needs to be uh, cleaned or at least treated. And Alfa Laval can also supply um, uh, auxiliary equipment to assure that we have a good um, uh, run uh, uptime. And um, plate heat exchanger itself has a, such a high turbulence flow that it's self-cleaned also. Wall shear stress is, 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 is high. Uh, our products are more and more uh, produced from recyclable material. And in the future, we hope to have complete heat exchangers with fossil free steel. So that's very important for us to be sure that the products can be recycled and it's using recycled material. Now uh, I'm going to um, look at some cases and I will do that because we are talking large uh, capacities here. It's going to be our semi valid range that is used for ammonia. And it's in cooperation with EES Energy System Builder uh, that has been um, installing systems since. We have cases here now that are five years old, so they're really up and running. And we know they deliver uh, what we are going to show here. The first case is a sewage water heat recovery case, where uh, this is an opportunity really for uh, in most uh, places that we have hot water coming out of the sewage plant. And uh, treated uh, sewage water, uh, we can recover heat. This is a case in Denmark where we have a plant that uh, can save up to CO2, uh, 128,000 CO2 emissions over five years, replacing the, the coal-fired uh, is it heating by a heat pump? And you can see here also that we have uh, uh, supplying here also filters and treatment for, for uh, uh, assuring that we have good water inlet to the sewage plant. And when this was designed in 2020, we did in fact put in an extra heat exchanger in between um, to be sure that we had uh, the heat pump up and running. Today, this equipment you could, you could enter with a uh, river water, uh, the sea sewage water right into the, to the evaporator. Uh, also, if you are reducing the temperature of the sewage water before it's going to the, to the river, we are also saving aquatic life because we are coming closer to the winter temperature of the river. Uh, this plant is running by... Uh, we have, uh, as you can see here, it's um, 80,000 megawatt hours per year that we are supplying uh, from a heat pump that is 20 megawatt. The COP obtained in this plant is four, which is uh, decent and can give the payback we want. No. As, I, as I said, this is designed, it was starting in 2020 and delivered a few years before that. So now we could maybe find even smaller improvements. But um, here you have the sewage water available. It was 11 degrees at the design point in the winter. And um, we have the glycol loop in between, so we have 9 degrees to consume. And the sink water we want to produce for the district heating network here is, is 65 degrees, with a loop of 40 degrees. And this was, at that moment, made in step, four steps. So you can see how we are using... Uh, how we are heating the water uh, from 40 to 46 degrees in the first step, uh, condensing at 49 degrees. And we have um, uh, cooling, uh, last step of the cooling, glycol from 5 to 4 degrees, evaporating uh, at 0 0.5 degrees. So not a super uh, high approach, but this is what we did at that time to be sure that we would have I go today, I would say more two degrees is possibility, but um, <clears throat> on the condenser side, also much closer approach. I'll show you the next case. Here you can see the steps. So in this, in this way, uh, the duty is, is uh, divided, and we reach our 64 degrees, entering the four states, and then there is also an oil cooler giving one degree extra to the plant. Um, so evaporating 0 0.5, two, three, four degrees, 
and cooling the water, nine degrees water down to, to four degrees. This is how this plant was done and it was uh, using the plate TT changes, uh, four pieces of flood evaporators, uh, T20B WFD, and uh, four pieces of condensers for high pressure side TK20 BWFX. And then we had subcoolers and oil coolers on the plant in addition, smaller ones. It was my cava compressors in this case. Um, there is other suppliers <laughs> uh, doing these jobs as well, but uh, also there was some um, water-cooled motors, uh -huh. flood cell operators, and ground for circulation pumps. All this is shared from the system builder to us. Another case is a greenhouse heating. It's in UK. Um, this was finished in 2022 and up and running, where we are using the irrigation water as a heat source. Uh, the recovered uh, ir irrigation water is in, you can see the large ponds on the field outside the, the 20 hectare of uh, greenhouse, producing cucumbers. And uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, so it's, it was far away from the city. We will, it was combined and we had a CHP plant to produce power, uh, the, the heat and power. But by using the, the additional heat pumps, uh, uh, delivering 65,000 megawatt of thermal heat, we reduced the, the emissions by 12,600 tons uh, CO2 equivalent annually. And this uh, plant was awarded by an incentive uh, from UK Renewable Heat Incentive Plan scheme. Uh, here also, here we are doing, uh, there was two parts of this. I'm going to explain the one single step heat pump part uh, in detail with the, uh, um, so COP of 4.3, ammonia for the whole plant was 2,600 kilo. Um, irrigation water side was cooled from 12 to 8 degrees. And we had also here an intermediate loop uh, and evaporation temperature three and a half. So uh, it's only two and a half degrees uh, temperature difference there. Uh, heating the water from 35 to 55, going into the radiators of the greenhouse. And um, you can also see the condensing side here. Um, so um, condensing temperature 53, and you can see the heating water is or the, uh, leaving 52, so only one degree approach. Um, and that's typically what you can obtain in a plated exchanger or even closer, because you can use the superheating at the end of the, of the um, uh, condensing uh, pr um, process. And then we have the uh, compressor oil cooling uh, helping us doing a couple of last degrees in this plant. Um, yes, here we del delivered, um, because it was a lower temperature, so we had lower pressures, so we could have some simpler frames, but it's still the T20 BW FT size, and FT for the condensers, and then we have the subcoolers uh, uh, M10 and T10 EW in addition. Here was also my cava supplying the compressors, and the same component supplier as this was one system builder that used this. Okay. One more thing is a data center in Denmark. Here were several supplying suppliers uh, um, delivering systems. ES Energy had one part of the three, um, but this plant maybe is well known. It's a big social media giant that wanted to minimize their their um, environmental impact and offered to deliver uh, their heating uh, for free to the nearby a district heating uh, company. So this is a very good sector coupling example. Uh, the, sec the district heating company was looking for additional heat and uh, looking for sources. And this was quite good. The location of the data center was very close to the district heating grid. And uh, yeah, by that, this is up and running also uh, four years. And here you have um, uh, the production for the part that we were looking at at the moment, 80,000 megawatt hours uh, of um, heating, 20 megawatt, was a three-step heat pump ammonia, 
and the heating COP was 4.7. And then, of course, here you are also using, we are cooling the data center, so it's very important that we are also in delivering a COP uh, on the cooling side. So, in fact, it pays off very well. And the cooling water was obtained from the data center by 27 degrees, cooling down to 15. Heating, uh, district heating water from 40 to 75. And in three steps, as you can see. And uh, here, um, the first step, and the last step of water heating, 40 to 52 degrees. Oh, sorry, first step, 40 to 52 degrees. Um, at the condensing temperature, uh, 57. Cooling water, 19 to 15. Evaporator, evaporating at 12 degrees. So, in the three steps, we have... Um, um, yeah, approach here is two, to three to two, uh, two to three degrees, depending on the on the on the, and on the condensing side, it's two degrees more or less, smaller. Today we 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 could probably evaluate this a bit more and get closer, but it's running. And here we supply the same thing. Here was uh, higher temperatures, so it was the TK, uh, B twenty BW FX for the hot side. So, yeah, these are systems that we know are running and uh, uh, in, in these places and uh, more. So, um, one thing when you have the district heating network and we have a cooling, um, um, a data center is uh, some, it's good to have storage a little bit in between. So in this place we have uh, several uh, thermal storage on the district heating side to be able to supply uh, the needed water. And also from the source side, from the data center, there was added uh, um, storage. Okay. So we, 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 are, we can offer a lot of help working on the heat transfer side, also for large industrial heat pump to be sustainable and we are available all over the world. So we have also many installations, so we can have some ideas about what works, what is not working, and we are testing ourselves. And um, I would say that um, the, on, this si on this type of systems, where they are large, so service over time is very important to have a life cycle with, in partnership with the system supplier. So, Please contact us if you want to discuss, if you are a planner of a, of a heat pump or if you are a builder of a heat pump, uh, please contact any of our people in uh, Alfa Laval. And also now we are in uh, Hall 6 and we are showing the, in fact, a largest, larger ammonia condenser. So now it can reach up to 20 megawatt in one unit. Uh, 63 bar, uh, 900 PSI. A unit, and we also have many smaller options for heat pumps, uh, for heat, for propane, CO2, uh, hydrocarbon, uh, in general. So please visit our booth. Still a couple of hours left. Thank you very much.